I think that uh, what is happening in Indonesia is something that we are looking at uh, very closely. I believe the government is doing that. Um, we are worried definitely of this uh, Delta variant, but um, and I hope that you know our government will actually react faster because our healthcare services as it is, is actually under great stress. Where case numbers are concerned though, per one million of population, Malaysia does seem to be doing worse than Indonesia. But Irma, the figures in Indonesia are still staggering with nearly 50,000 cases a day and on the rise. Yes, true, true. Uh, but we are a population of 30 million. And uh, I believe that we should be able to deal with this much better than what we are doing now. Because uh, it's only recently that we are starting the uh, full-scale uh, vaccination. Uh, and even then, it is very slow. Um, we are a population of 30 million, but it's only a third of um, our population are being vaccinated. First dose. Yeah, um, and um, and with this Delta variant, if it gets worse, I'm I have doubt. I have really my doubt whether we can actually deal with um, more cases of uh, COVID um, in in Malaysia because uh, at the present moment uh, we are under testing, we are under vaccinating, and our healthcare structure is really at a brink of um, breaking down because uh, the, the, the number of cases is just too many. And Irma, is that a similar story in Indonesia? What are some of the main challenges your country is facing right now in containing this outbreak? Well, yes, I think it's quite similar, but Indonesia may be facing more difficult situation right now since uh, we knew that the transmissions and then uh, we have the increased number of uh, infection in Indonesia and we have uh, a soaring and increased um, um, number of positivity rates over the past uh, almost one month. I think uh, the positivity rates uh, in Indonesia is uh, always uh, around 40 or beyond uh, 40%. Uh, so this is, I think, a worrying situation. And um, uh, we don't have enough, uh, we don't have a substantial um, a number of uh, people who get the vaccines and we don't have a full uh, well we actually have a full pictures of the transmissions but as uh, what is happening in Malaysia we also still have um, a low testing rates uh, this is a uh, uh, very much uh, concerning actually and uh, uh, the concern of increased uh, social mixing social mobility and then relaxations uh, of public health and social measures uh, it's uh, everywhere the government actually over the past two weeks have uh, been put a stricter measure but still uh, it is not um, a fully lockdown where you can still see uh, people moving around and the mobility of the people still uh, going on in the center or epicenters of the, the, the transmission. Indeed, because Malaysia has imposed quite strict lockdowns over the past few months. Uh, do you think the lockdowns have been working, Maria? Um, seriously, uh, no, <laughs> because uh, it's not just a, a strict lockdown, we also have an emergency, which is meant to actually resolve this uh, pandemic, but it didn't. It, uh, we see the cases rising, uh, and, and that is really because the contact tracing, the isolation, and then um, the treatment is just not there, yeah? Uh, and the vaccination is also not there. So. Um, why lock us? Why lock down when we don't even have a systematic plan to actually vaccinate the people? Like in Selangor, uh, what the uh, Selangor government is trying to do is to um, we uh, actually they did a whole round uh, uh, of testing in the Selangor and eventually um, identify the hotspot. Now they are actually uh, doing the testing again and uh, identifying uh, places where. You know, there are high cases, um, isolating and treating and also vaccinating everyone, everyone that is uh, positive, uh, that are negative. So that should be the way that the national government should be doing. Uh, but we are not doing it. And that is why I'm very worried that when we have this uh, Delta virus, we may not be able to deal with it. 
And indeed, vaccinations are taking place. But in Indonesia, we're seeing a lot of health workers fall sick with COVID. Uh, why do you think that is, Irma? Well, actually, uh, first of all, because of, of uh, the very high uh, transmittable Delta variants uh, in Indonesia, it's very concerning. Uh, so it makes uh, so more people are infected by uh, this virus. And then the consequences, we have uh, more cases and we have more uh, uh, patients with uh, severe conditions that needs uh, to get uh, immediate uh, medical help. So that's why they have to go to the hospital to seek for medical help. But unfortunately, in uh, specifically in uh, Jakarta, greater areas, uh, the hospital occupancy rate is almost full. And then in other some places across Java and violence, the situation is uh, is the same. So that means that it give us a pictures the situations uh, within the hospital uh, where the health worker have to face uh, have to tackle have to uh, care uh, so many patients beyond their capacity on the other hand their own resources actually also limited because uh, so many health workers are infected by the virus due to so many patients are there and then I think Dr. Panduriano uh, ex explained it that the, the efficacy and um, the safety of uh, Sinovac it's been questioning, and that's why the government of Indonesia right now doing an extra shot uh, for boosters, specifically uh, for health workers. But we will see uh, this uh, rollout of the Moderna booster for the health workers is actually still ongoing, not like still a very uh, small step, but it's it, it started. But we'll see. We have to monitor closely and to make sure that all uh, health workers will get uh, an extra uh, Moderna uh, vaccination. But let me let me give you one one thing. Uh, the figures uh, since our organizations is recorded daily a uh, death of healthcare workers. So uh, over the past uh, half and uh, uh, one and a half years, we recorded that at least 1,464 health workers have died due to the coronavirus. And this month alone, alone in July, we recorded that at least 252 health workers died uh, from the virus. Okay, so a de significant decrease there. But you did mention uh, China's Sinovac vaccine, which I understand in Malaysia, uh, the government there is phasing that out, Maria. What has the response been like there? Uh, well, um, it's uh, phasing out, uh, it's finishing the stock that is available and bringing in Pfizer and AstraZeneca. But I, I think that, you know, uh, what is most important is really to actually bring down the numbers is vaccination and also to complement it with con uh, contact tracing. That is um, a, a kind of basic that everyone is doing and we have to actually uh, start doing it as fast as we can. Otherwise, we will... We, we are facing almost the same problem as what has been described in Indonesia. And uh, I certainly do not want to see us going um, into that direction in Malaysia as well. But um, the, the, the problem is that uh, presently, you know, our healthcare system is at its weakest. Uh, we need uh, much, much more um, efforts to be made to actually strengthen our health care services. That is indeed the priority around the world, isn't it, here in Australia too, to keep people out of our hospitals, those who uh, have COVID-19. Irma Hidayana in Jakarta, Maria Chin Abdullah in Kuala Lumpur, good to get your comparisons. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome.